Hi, everyone. It's so good to see so many of you here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm just going to give you um, an overview of the Renting Homes Wales Act. Um, it's not intended to be a full dive into the whole legislation, but just some of the key points just to check that you are um, compliant. If you've got any questions, you can ask us along the way. So what was the Renting Homes Wales Act? It was the biggest change to housing law in Wales for decades. Uh, previously, we had um, Housing Act, um, but now Wales is separated off. So we have our own um, Housing Act, Renting Homes Wales Act um, to, to follow in Wales. The implementation date for this was the 1st of December 2022. And the aim was to change the way that all landlords in Wales rent their properties and improve how we rent and manage houses in Wales. So what does this mean for landlords? The, the main aim was to have a simpler system. So there would be two, two types of contracts. So you would have a secure contract for um, properties in the social rented sector with housing associations, um, council tenants and things like that, and a standard contract for the private rented sector. Um, part of that would be that contract holders would have more security as the minimum occupation period is now 12 months and landlords have to ensure that their homes are fit for human habitation. So if we just go on to my next slide, um, let's have a look. So a lot of the terminology in Wales has, has changed. Um, we used to have tenancy agreements, we used to have tenants, and that's now changed to be tenants are now known as contract holders and tenancy agreements are known as occupation contracts. So, you know, we've been, we've been working in this industry for such a long time, tenant and tenancy agreements, that, that wording just tends to roll off the tongue so easily. So it's, um, it's taken a bit of work to, to get the new terminology correct. Um, so part of the legislation was that all contracts issued contracts for tenants must be in writing and contract holders should be provided with a written statement of their contract within 14 days of moving in. And any existing tenants who lived in their properties before the 1st of December 2022 um, moved over to what's called a converted contract and they should have received a written statement of their converted contract by the 1st of June last year. Um, failure to do so could render a notice for possession invalid and could prevent any other variation of terms such as rent increase being applied. The occupation contracts can be issued via hard copy or electronically if the contract holder has given permission. And also alongside that occupation contract, you need to be issuing an RHW2 notice. And that is a notice which gives the occupier details of the landlord's name and address. Um, so I've put at the bottom here, there are model written contracts available on the Welsh Government website. But <clears throat> we would just say be beware if you're using those contracts, because they're set up in such a way that you could issue a fixed contract for six or 12 months and then it could automatically roll onto a periodic contract and the periodic con element of that contract is not covered in the initial written statement that you will have issued because there's two separate contracts so if it did roll onto periodic you should have also been serving a written statement at that point to confirm that that, that had happened. So um, on my next slide, I've just touched on, touching on repairs and fitness for human habitation. Now, Lisa will cover this in further detail on her section, but one of the main pointers of the legislation is that landlords must make sure that their homes are fit to live in. So that includes making sure that the property is safe and also um, is compliant with electrical safety testing, gas safety and oil regulations, and also having mains fitted smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. If there's non-compliance with any of those areas or there's any issues with repairs, then rent will not be payable for any period during which the property is, is classed as not being fit for human habitation. And if you were to issue a no-fault notice in response to repair, the court could refuse to make a possession, or issue a possession order and you'll be restricted from serving notice again for a further six months. So this can really um, lengthen the pos possession procedure. So you just need sure that you're being compliant all of the all of the way really um, if you did have a tenant who lived in the property before the implementation date you had until the 1st of December last year to make sure that your homes were compliant with the electrical safety regs and smoke alarms so just go on to my next slide um, so I'm just here I've got a section about notice periods um, notice periods have 
um, extended for, for landlords in Wales and um, you would now issue a no fault notice under the section 173 and it would be a six month notice period. This notice can only be used when the contract is periodic and you can't use it within the first six months. So this is why I said before um, there's a minimum occupation period of 12 months because the, the tenant can move in and be there for six months and then you'd have to serve a six months notice if you needed the property back. Um, landlords still need to make sure that they complied with Rent Smart Wales registration and licensing conditions and the deposit protection rules. Um, if the contract holder um, caused any issues such as there's a breach of contract or antisocial behaviour or rent arrears, you can use a shorter notice period, um, but that would depend upon the breach on how short the notice period is. If you haven't issued a written statement or it's not complete, then this could restrict the landlord's ability to gain possession as well. Um, so that's also an important factor in, in this legislation. Um, contract holders themselves, if they wanted to vacate, they would only have to give four weeks notice to vacate either at the end of the fixed term or when the contract is periodic. Um, and there was something that one point that I've made a note on that I didn't add on to my slides before, but um, just coming back to on written statements and them not being complete. Every time there is a variation in the legislation or a change or an update, that information has to be communicated to your contract holder. So you have to issue um, a variation of contract and that also forms, forms part of the written statement. Um, so if you haven't done that and there's been a legislation change, that would then um, render your written statement not complete. Um, the, the legislation has also brought in um, a kind of use it or lose it scenario with, with notices. So if you serve notice on a tenant and it expires and the tenant hasn't vacated, you have to apply to the courts within three months for a possession um, to, to get possession. If you don't apply within that time frame, that notice can expire and you actually can't serve another notice for another six months. So what initially started out to be six months could turn into an 18 months um, uh, possession time frame if you're not careful with that. So it's just a way of, of the courts making sure that landlords are showing their intent when they're serving notice and notice is not just being served for the sake of it really. So just then on my next slide. Um, so when you have um, a contract holder in a property and say they live there alone or there's two people living there one wants to move out or another person wanted to move in. Previously, we used to have to um, prepare a, a new, end the previous contract and prepare a new one to make sure it was all compliant. Under the legislation now, um, a, a joint contract holder can leave the contract without ending the contract entirely. So the remaining person in the property would then just take over the contract and you would issue a, a notice of variation which would update the contract and, and be the written statement and again if new contract holders can be added without having to end the current contract and start a new one. The uh, rent under the occupation contracts can be varied once every 12 months and landlords need to serve a two month notice to the tenant of um, a rent variation and this is um, served by way of an RHW12 just letting the tenant know that there is a variation of the rent. Um, there's been no change to legislation with regards to tenants having a statutory right to keep pets. Landlords and contract holders are able to agree additional terms around whether a pet is permitted and, and it still remains the landlord's de decision at the end of the day. Um, there's been no change with deposits. The same arrangements apply for protection of deposits. So if you um, take a deposit when the contract holder moves in, then you still have to make sure that you are registering that deposit and issuing the tenant with the prescribed information within the 30-day time frame. So the, there is quite a bit of training materials on, online. Um, Rent Smart Wales has a top-up course if you um, have a licence, so you can go through that and just familiarise yourself with the legislation. Uh, there's also the Welsh Government website is useful um, for, for a lot of information also. And then I think that is just, I'm coming to the end of my slides now. So just to wrap it up, we do have a Facebook group. Um, so if you want to join us, the information's on the screen there. So 
we can hopefully um, get some good conversations going in there and, and give out some advice. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. Hope that's been useful. If you've got any questions, just pop them in the chat and I can try and answer them at the end.